well believe it or not there is a serious point to this um, this is me well I basically sat down on the floor and drew around myself in a driving position because I want to know how much of my head is going to stick out of the top of the bodywork and where to put the seat and where to put the firewall behind the seat and the tubing of the rear of the roll cage behind the seat as well so I need to shape of myself basically so we, for this machine I've decided on a five inch ground clearance which is that including this here um, then there's going to be some tubing of framework or something probably running under the seat or at least left and right of my backside so I should add, add at least another maybe one and three quarter inches and then this is where the absolute lowest possible edge of the seat can be assuming there's no seat cushion or anything like that um, so knowing that I can then stick myself can just put that on the floor yeah there and if, because the chassis is the correct height above the ground as it will be on its 31 inch rear tires um, I now can work out where, how high my head will be above the chassis rails and I, from the cross-sectional diagrams I've got which I'm going to cut out in plywood as well cross-sectional rings and each of these marker points which correspond with the points in this diagram um, I can then work out what the roll cage needs to look like how it's going to be welded at points onto here how tall it's got to be and um, from that how big a fairing I need to go on top of the belly tank because they usually have some sort of fairing to enclose the uh, air intake for the engine and also sort of blend in with the top of the roll bar there are some smaller belly tanks where the, the hole of the roll cage for the driver sort of sticks up above it but I, I, that doesn't look right to me. I'd rather have a slightly fatter belly tank and um, less of my head sticking out. The other thing, of course, here I'm not wearing a helmet. So you've got to add another couple of inches at least for a helmet. And also that's a kind of medium sitting position. I could actually hunker down a bit more if I wanted to um, to get lower. So that's just sort of a, a mid position sitting reasonably comfortably, fairly upright. Um, so it's a good point to start from at least so now here I've marked on the top this is where the top of the belly tank would come if you hunt because a hole in the top for a cockpit so it should be a bit lower but it will it will come up it will come up like that so now here I've marked I've marked these bands a foot apart on my diagram these are in feet so it's naught at the at the beginning one two three four five up to 13 feet um, here it goes from 5 to 6.5 feet because I stretched the whole frame by six, 6 inches which is probably why I've got this little gap here of 6 inches whereas ordinarily you'd be really you know having to um, hunker down a bit more forward in the cockpit to make room for the radiator and so on or the water tank um, I just want to be a little bit more comfortable driving it so that's why it's stretched um, so I've now marked these on the actual frame so there's 10.5, 9.5, 8.5, 7.5, 6.5 5. longer one there 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is out here in space um, and then what I've done is I've just got a tape measure and I've actually measured not what they should be on my diagram but I've actually measured what they are in real life and hopefully they're close to what I planned them to be so I've got an inner so from the inner chassis rail to the inner the other side here 26.2 centimeters and then the outer to outer 36.8 and the reason I need to know that is I'm gonna cut in MDF a set of um, semicircle crescents so they're like half the belly tank and cross sections foot apart all the way along apart from this stretch bit here 
and I'm going to actually slot them into the actual frame. I'm not going to make a separate wooden model because it takes too much room up because I haven't really got the space. So I'm actually going to slot them into the, my actual chassis, string them together with um, you know a few a few flexible pieces between them, and um, make my aluminium body based on that. Uh, that's the plan. So I'll see if I can get those laser cut. Um, I know somebody that runs a company that makes interiors for camper vans and he's, he's got a gigantic CNC laser cutter for uh, you know like MDF. So that's the plan. So now I know my actual measurements here I'm going to go back on the computer and design my cross sections and then um, yeah so there'll be about 10 or 12 of them and then I'll um, see if I can get those cut somewhere right I don't know if this makes any sense at all I've got my vertical hoop planned on I've got I know the from my dummy that I made that my head would be 12 centimeters above the bodywork then we've got to add another seven centimeters for the thickness of the, hel the helmet um, that's the maximum thickness of the padding of the helmet um, and they've got to allow 44 millimeters, which is 1.75 inch tube. So that's the top of the tube there. So we've got another tube here now that's going to be at an angle like this of about 35 degrees. So um, if I draw a line down there and then move it around 35, I should be able to get that angle worked out. Well, don't laugh, but here's, here's me, right? This is the first hoop comes up you can see the the wall of the this is the wall of the aluminium body the belly tank so as much as possible it comes up inside the wall then pops through and then comes up around my helmet um, this kink here is to clear my shoulders if you can't do that I suppose the next best thing would be to make that piece there straight so it just comes up and over and straight down but I'm trying to get the width there for my shoulders. Okay, so for this one I've just done one half, but obviously the other half is the same in reverse. And then underneath that, so that's called the first hoop. There. Then underneath that we've got underside of first hoop. The bottom is flattened off, so that would go under there. You see, like that. And it's got about a five-inch ground clearance. Because I've got these side rails, which are box section, so I weld up like that. And then the next key one is this one. Hang on, Three bits of cardboard. This is the other main one. This is the sloping one. All right, so that will go there. And I've measured this about a billion times at an angle of about 32 degrees and then I've done this one underside a hoop too so that one goes under there about here again 5 inch ground clearance and then we've got hoop 3 now it's just a straight curve so that goes there like that and the steering and things will be mounted to that and then I've got an underside of hoop three, which again is flattened off, and that will go underneath. If you can see that, like that. The other thing I'll do while I'm waiting for those to come will be to make the plates go on here with the C-shaped cutouts here, which should be welded on here. Um, I'm just going to tack weld them on because there's a high chance of getting it wrong. This shaft here has got to either be parallel with the chassis tubes if I decide that my engine is going to run parallel with the tubes. Bearing in mind the tubes have a very slight two and a half degree nose down angle or if I want my engine level with the ground which might be better then I need to um, put a spirit level or my angle gauge onto this actual shaft and get it level with the ground and then tack weld it all in that position having measured multiple times along each side to make sure it's not twisted otherwise it 
cobble crab along the ground, which wouldn't be good. This gap here, from here to here, is just under 10 centimetres, which actually is just enough for what I want to do. So I can squeeze my piece of plate in between the two pins. I probably won't use the rollers. And then if I've got a wedge-shaped pointy thing acting upwards, hopefully it'll bend with a reasonably tight crease not in a gradual curve, which is not what I want. It's not pretty and it's not subtle, but I think that should be capable of putting two bends of about 25 degrees into two pieces of uh, six mil thick plate. While that's been cutting, I've been taking off the rear shock absorbers. The rear shocks have slightly longer arms than the front ones on the car, so I'm just playing around here, but if these go within the bodywork, sort of here. You can imagine they might have a rod goes down to something down here. As long as it doesn't foul the uh, toy rod, but I think with a bit of fabrication that might work. Right, this has arrived. This is 6mm thick steel plate and I'm going to use it to make these plates which will go one each side here, here, on the same other side and they'll be welded over here to the axle tube and then there'll be several bolts here um, which you'll be able to access through the end and that means you'll be able to unbolt the rear axle if, if need be even though it's a solid rear end. So now I'm going to put a bend in this plate of about 20 degrees using this uh, thing I made the other day and I'll jam the plate un under these pins which are meant to be for these rollers so I'll just put it in like that there. You get the idea. Jammed in, it's ready to go. I'll just check my V-shaped pointy thing is lined up roughly with the line, which it is. So let's uh, see if we can bend this a little bit. 